I don't know when you'll be watching this video, but as is often the case in the life extension, lifespan content world, the moment a new study releases, everyone makes all the content about it, touting it as the next fountain of youth. Well, this story is no different as a massive study published in the esteemed journal Science makes some pretty bold claims about the amino acid taurine. What's been interesting to me is that the researchers point out many of the positives experienced with taurine, but fail to mention some of the potential negatives. The same is true for a lot of people discussing the topic. So, let's take this study apart and put it back together like a wannabe engineer trying to figure out how things work. We are talking about this study, which was published just last month, at least at the time of this video's publishing. No doubt it covers a lot of ground on the topic of lifespan as well as health span, or the overall health of your body over time. Obviously, I won't be going over every morsel of data, but I wanted to touch on four things. One, lifespan, obviously. Two, a few metrics of health span. Three, stem cells and cellular senescence. Don't worry, I'll explain what that is. Four, some potential worries to keep an eye on and what it means for you. So this first point, lifespan, is the main one that people have been talking about. The researchers measured the amount of the nutrient, amino acid, taurine in the blood of three different biological systems. One, mice. Two, monkeys. Three, something called a homo sapien. Never heard of it before, but maybe you're familiar. Let's focus on the human, I mean, homo sapien data. The vertical axis is the amount of taurine found in the blood, and the horizontal axis is how old the people are. As you can see, with increasing age, there is a reduction in serum, blood, taurine levels. By age 50, taurine levels are less than half of what they are at the beginning of life. That isn't much of a surprise considering at the beginning of life, taurine is critical for healthy development. But why is drastically low blood taurine levels a potential problem later in life? Well, if we turn to the mouse data, which can be easily studied, considering their lifespan is a fraction of ours, we can begin to see some fascinating relationships between taurine and lifespan. The researchers fed two groups of mice the exact same diet, except one group of mice received taurine in addition to their usual food, and the other group, the control group, did not. The group that received taurine is shown by the red line, and the group not supplemented with taurine is the blue line. We're looking at a Kaplan-Meier graph here. So the vertical axis is the percent of mice that are still alive. 100% is, well, obviously all the mice are still alive. And as it dips down, the number of mice still alive dwindles over time, which is represented by the horizontal axis showing mouse age. So let me put the ball in your court now. Stretch those analytical muscles, which are actually technically brain cells. How would you interpret this data? If you said that the taurine supplemented group seemed to live longer than the non supplemented group, then you are correct. Their lifespan increased about 10 to 12 percent for both male and female. Additionally, I wonder if you caught one more thing about this data. Let me put it back up for you. Notice anything particularly intriguing? Maybe you noticed it, but the researchers didn't begin giving these mice taurine until they were already well into middle age. So this means that taurine supplementation does not need to be taken at the earliest possible moment, but rather can be supplied later in life and offers this benefit. Pretty incredible, but we'll return to this and offer some context later. Outcome number two, metrics of health. The researchers did a ton of measures in this area, so this will be pretty surface level. Ultimately, they showed that taurine supplementation reduced body fat, as well as improved muscle strength and blood sugar levels. But I'd like to point out one area that's probably not at the forefront of your mind when you consider health, until you get older, that is. Take a look at these images. They're images of bone. 
the left image is the bone of the non-supplemented, and the two images to the right are the bone supplemented at 500 milligrams and 1,000 milligrams of taurine. The overall amount of bone volume increased in the taurine supplemented groups. Beyond that, actual tests of bone strength, which is vital for later life, also showed improvements, with both blue bars being the supplemented groups. The bottom line is that supplementation had widespread benefits. Outcome number three stem cells and senescence. Okay, so I wanted to pay particular attention to this because it's an area I find absolutely fascinating. Your entire body originated from stem cells. I won't go into too many of the nerdy details here, otherwise we'll get derailed from the taurine discussion. But we are born with an extremely large pool of stem cells that sit in our already developed tissues until they're called upon to divide and differentiate, meaning they turn into the cells that your body needs. As we get older, and if we don't take care of ourselves, our stem cell pool gets exhausted. We have fewer and fewer stem cells. So our ability to heal, defend against pathogens, and much more is impaired. On the flip side, we have senescent cells, which are cells that have essentially reprogrammed themselves to be in a quiescent or semi-dormant state. It is a mechanism by which our cells avoid becoming cancerous. However, the accumulation of senescent cells can lead to negative effects on surrounding cells because the senescent cells secrete molecules that influence other cells to become more senescent. These molecules are called SASPs. So if I were to teach this to a five-year-old, not that I'm calling you a five-year-old, I'm just uber simplifying for brevity, we normally want more stem cells and fewer senescent cells. Okay, so we have the uber basics on those two areas. What does taurine do? On all measured tissues from brain, liver, gut, muscle, and fat, there was a noticeable reduction, as seen in blue, in a marker known as beta-galactosidase, which is a common marker of cellular senescence. That data alone across multiple tissues is really telling and offers good evidence that senescent cells are likely reduced in the body. But how about the more positive metric, stem cells? For that, we have to turn our attention to an experiment called an in situ hybridization assay. This experiment essentially takes tissues and denatures the DNA found within the cells. After denaturing them, which means that they are unwound from their helical structure that people are used to seeing when they think of DNA, the researchers add a probe that binds specifically to the gene of interest. So if the gene is present, the probe will bind, and if the gene is not present or mutated, the probe will not bind. Additionally, this probe has a fluorophore attached to it, so when the researchers look under a microscope using fluorescent technology, they can detect which tissues have the intact gene and which do not, because the tissues with the intact gene will light up. So that's what we're looking at here. The only thing you need to compare is which image has more pinkish fluorescence. We're looking at skin and gut cells. The left images are from tissues that were not supplemented with taurine, and the right images were taurine supplemented tissues. Clearly, the right images have more of the key fluorescence, but what does that have to do with stem cells? The gene LGR5 is a strong marker of mitotically active stem cells, meaning stem cells that are dividing. Now, unlike the senescent marker beta-galactosidase, this is not as potent of proof that taurine supplementation definitively increases the stem cell population. We would need more experiments across more tissues to be more certain. Still, it leans our thinking, or maybe I should speak for myself, my thinking in the direction of increased stem cells. Pretty incredible, yet again. Okay, so we've had our fun, or maybe maybe I've had my fun, and you're asleep on the other side of the screen, but let's get into contextualizing these results a little bit. 
First, it should always be noted that the majority of the experiments are performed in animals, especially mice. So, do these results actually translate to humans? Well, keep in mind that just because we saw a downward trend in the serum taurine that was seen in both mice, monkeys, and humans does not mean that the effects in mice necessarily translate to humans. So the researchers attempted to answer some, even if not all, of these questions. They looked at the correlation in humans between blood taurine as well as two of its metabolites and a number of clinical measures like the inflammatory marker C-reactive protein, seen here as CRP, as well as obesity and several others. The way we read this is that if the box under each clinical outcome is more blue, then there is an inverse relationship, meaning having more blood taurine is associated with a decrease in this clinical outcome. So CRP, as an example, is slightly bluish. So it is slightly reduced when taurine levels rise. On the other hand, having a reddish color means there is a direct relationship, or as taurine is higher, then the clinical outcome is also higher. And here is where I feel many people discussing the study, even the researchers themselves, fail to emphasize certain aspects. For example, dyslipidemia is correlated with increased taurine, yet if you were to read the study, the researchers only point out that obesity, diabetes, CRP are correlated with being reduced, with no mention of the negatives. Dyslipidemia, high LDL cholesterol, elevated AST for the liver. Ultimately, these are simply correlations, and with no additional statistical analyses, it's impossible to tease out the specific reason for these potentially concerning results. But if we are going to highlight the positives, we should probably also highlight the negatives equally. So, what do I take from this study and how do we apply it? Look, so I'm cautious about my interpretation here. There's a ton of exciting potential here, and while I don't think that taurine will extend our lives by 12%, I think it's entirely possible that it could have a dramatic effect across our body. The uh, negative human correlations that we just went over aren't worrisome enough for me on their own, but if they have you feeling uneasy, then it may be a reason to dismiss taurine. Otherwise, if even a fraction of the effects that we see in animals translates to humans, we have significant reason to be excited, especially considering supplementation later in life seems to be so impactful, which is typically attributed to habits and nutrition changes that occur much earlier in life. Essentially, the head start effect on health may be neutralized. But if you feel dissatisfied with the details supplied in this video, and you'd like to learn all the details, and I mean truly all the details in the study findings, including more in humans, then I'd encourage you to check out my detailed study analysis, which will release two days after this video publishes. You can find it right here. Otherwise, check out some of my other content, and I'll speak to you there. Bye. Thank you.